Today I'm going to deal with repairing two oscilloscope clock generators. These are the little boards that uh, generate the picture that you see on my scope, on my opening logo, right there. Two of those boards, both of them were blown up by bad scopes, and I finally got the parts in to uh, fix them. So let's see if I have any luck getting both these boards to work. I've got here two identical boards. What these are, are these are an XY oscilloscope clock board. You've seen on my opening logo when I show a shot of the time on my scope was generated by one of these boards. Both of them are, have failed. I blew up one working on a scope that I was trying to interface it to and uh, had a short and I'm pretty sure I popped the AD converter or DA converter to say um, this is the Atmel I know it works this was the first one that I built this kit it came from a kit the, one of the first um, SMD kits that I built so I built another one and this one here is the replacement and I just kind of hang on to this one Before you guys ask, um, these these are no longer available. <clears throat> you can't get these units anymore. So there's there's no point in asking where the kit came from, because the company no longer sells them. This is one I had stuck to the bottom of my scope when I had it on display. So I'm going to um, try and repair this thing. Uh, I I know that the problem on this one is probably the same IC. In fact, if I power this up, this one won't even power up. But this IC gets real hot. This one here, I get a distorted picture because it's almost like one channel is inverted. It, it's really bad. If I hook it up to the scope, you guys can see. Maybe I'll hook this one up because this one I'll get a picture off of and I'll show you guys how bad it looks. As you can see, it looks pretty sad. Even if I try and adjust the size of it, Nothing happens. To Notice that it's horizontally flipped and you can see the second hand running backwards. That's a problem. It's all distorted. You can see what happens if I try to increase the size. It just distorts like crazy. And it's kind of backwards too. Uh, that just may be my scope probes are reversed here. Let's just move them around to change the X and Y around and see whether that <coughs> corrects the backwardness of this thing. Probably won't do a thing to it. As you can see though, we've got some severe distortion. The other one doesn't work at all. In fact, these used to work perfect on my old HP scope. It used to look fantastic on that. Even my old Iwatsu scope <clears throat> looked great. Can't display it on my digital scope because it's not fast enough. Use an analog scope for this. Anyway, that's one of them. We're gonna change that IC out. The other one is completely Fubard. If I try to run that, nothing happens at all. On this one, if I plug it in, all that happens is this IC gets very hot immediately. So I think this, this IC is cooked for one. I think everything else is probably okay. So we're going to change this IC and see if I can bring this one back to life. Now, this one worked flawlessly up until I went to the ham radio swap meet and I bought a little Heath kit scope that was supposedly totally rebuilt. All new caps, everything's perfect on it. It's got an A, it's got an XY input. I thought, perfect. I can create a permanent display cathode ray tube clock to use with my little module. And silly me that I actually believed that somebody in a 
ham radio swap meet actually knew what they were doing and I, I'm sure a, a lot of the guys do know what they're doing and I'm sure there was no no bad intentions on this scope that all the capacitors were replaced on but one thing that uh, they didn't do was they didn't check to see if there was any voltage coming out of the inputs on it and of course neither did I until I hooked it up and my uh, module was cooked then I put the meter on the X and Y input and found that there was 85 volts DC on one of the inputs so I'm assuming that there's probably a capacitor that's leaking and um, presenting a high voltage on the input and it cooked this so we're going to try fixing it today I got uh, a couple of ICs it's taken months I ordered these um, I don't know when was that swap meet back in April or May anyway I ordered these months ago and finally I received a package with two ICs in it so that I can fix both of these units. Now these are static sensitive so I'm opening these up on my static sensitive workbench not somewhere in here these ICs are not to be handled by unauthorized personnel because like, I'm, I'm the wrong guy for the job I think on this one somewhere in there there's two ICs and uh, we're gonna swap out that one on this board and then if this one fixes this one then we'll swap out the one on the other board and then I will have a spare oscilloscope clock generator to do something with. I don't know, maybe sell it to the highest bidder because these things, these little boards are actually quite rare. So um, let's get around to doing this thing. I'm going to use uh, my heat gun to take this off. I can hear the people screaming right now. But I'm going to mask the board with uh, heat shielding material so that I don't blow off all the parts that I don't want to remove. This is the stuff I'm going to use. This is a heat proof aluminum tape that I will mask around the chip that I want to remove. I'm going to mask around here so that when I put heat on here none of these components are going to get affected and get blown off the board. This will keep the heat from getting to them. So I'm just going to separate the backing from this. And we'll just cut some strips and place it on the board where we want to protect, namely around here. Should probably remove that lithium battery that's in here too for safety so we'll just pop that out So this way I'm going to shield all the other components on the board that could lift due to exposure to hot air 
and uh, that way I should be able to heat this IC up and just lift it and uh, replace it. So we're going to mark which uh, pin is number one so that I know which way it goes in. So I don't, well, I, I mean, I can always look at my other one anyway as a reference, so I don't really need to do that because I've got another one here. Show me which way the IC goes in. Pin one is in this corner here. So let's uh, get the old heat gun going. <clears throat> and I'll get my dental pick ready to lift this thing out when it when it gets up to temperature. Let's lift the IC out. I'm using the low setting on the heat gun, which will bring the air temperature up to, a, I think it's probably about 800, 800, 900 degrees. The high setting will actually burn the board, but uh, I've had pretty good luck with this one. This is just a regular run-of-the-mill Black & Decker uh, heat gun that I picked up for about 20 bucks, and it comes in useful many times. Like, you'll see, it'll lift this IC off, no problem, and no damage to the board. Okay, there goes the solder. You can see the wire has come off now, so it's up to temperature. It should just lift off here momentarily, just like that. There. Old IC is lifted off the board and removed. Let the board cool down a bit, and then we'll get prepping to mount the new one. Check this out. I got it so hot that the solder actually melted on the uh, output terminal here, and my wire came off, but that's okay. It's now cooling, so I can peel off the, the uh, heat shrill, sheet shield that I put on. What this stuff is used for, we actually use this at work in um, cable splicing when they put on... <clears throat> when they put on what they call heat shrink uh, enclosure. They actually put that around the cable because they the heat shrink come they're like a big heat shrink that they put on the end of the cable and they put a torch on it and it seals and glues and keeps water and stuff out but we have to build up the cables and where we don't want the cable to get damaged we put that uh, this stuff around it comes on a roll we put this stuff on <clears throat> one of the guys at work <clears throat> gave me a little bit on the end of a roll that uh, he said there wasn't enough for what he needed so he gave me it's got about a foot of uh, I guess if that foot foot and a half of uh, of aluminum basically it's it's like an aluminum shield he said here take this try this this might help you to uh, to uh, take out some components with your heat gun so anyway that's what that stuff is it uh, works pretty good. It keeps the other components in place, and of course, it does leave a sticky residue behind though when you take it off because it's uh, it's got a glue on the back of it. But it, it keeps your other parts from getting blown away when you're using a heat gun, or for that matter, a hot air station. It doesn't matter whether you're using a hot air station or a heat gun. The only difference between a hot air station and a heat gun is a hot air station and the temperature is controlled. And the, uh, the actual output is a little more restricted because it's got a smaller nozzle on it, but it's not an issue. The, the heat gun works every bit as well for removing uh, chips like that. I'm just waiting for my soldering iron to get up to temperature here, and then uh, we'll start prepping the board and get the new IC in place and see whether this board has been brought back to life. So we'll prep the board with some 
rosin. Okay, now one of these new microscopic ICs, which I can barely see. Well, first of all, we'll get the dead one out of the way so that I don't uh, grab that one by mistake, right? There's one of the ICs out. Seal the package up for the other one. It's one of the most critical parts of this repair is making sure that the new chip is completely aligned with the traces on the board before soldering it in place. Okay, now that the IC is lined up, I'm able to just tack in one pin to hold everything in place and then I can go ahead and do the rest of them. Fine work. That's what I was afraid of. I had a bunch of bridges here. My pads weren't quite aligned on this one side when I tacked it down. So I may have to remove this one again. And I'll, I'll, I'm just going to spend a bit more time to see if I can get the couple bridges cleared off here with some wick and stuff. And hopefully it's going to do the job. I'm using the drag technique try and drag the solder away. I think I got it. Take a closer look at that. I think I'm okay. I think I'm good. Don't see any bridges there. Let's uh, fire this up and see what it does. There. Uh, it's just something spilled on my screen, by the way. It's not a, that's not a blur. That is board number one fixed. Board number one fixed. Let's go and do board number two. And then I'll have two of these things so that I can make two oscilloscope clocks and I'll be a happy camper. Now these bloody ICs that are worth practically nothing cost me an absolute fortune to get them shipped here I think they worked out to about $24 a piece by the time I paid freight because the eBay seller that was selling them would not give a discount on a second chip they wanted like 12 bucks for the chip and 12 bucks for the shipping each because, you know, eBay has a tendency to screw you every chance they get, every eBay seller. Yes, the chip itself is dirt cheap. If I wanted to buy 100 pieces from Mauser, for example, I could have got them for about a buck a piece. But they had a minimum order of 100 pieces. What do I need 100 pieces for? I need two. They won't sell them. They won't sell two. They'll only sell them in quantity. Anyway, one board down, one to go. Let's fix the other one the same way. So here I go again. This time we'll do it with board number two. We're going to change the same part because I'm. I know the parts. The same part's bad on it. I remember the other one that I just fixed. It displayed nothing. That's why I didn't show it to you on the on the. Uh, the scope before because it displayed nothing. This one here has got the distorted picture which is kind of rotated by I think it's like 180 degrees. It was like upside down or something right? Or backwards. But it's all distorted. It's going to be the same chip. First we'll put our heat shield in here. So this will protect all the other components from 
getting heated up too hot while I'm removing the dead IC. Give you a shot of the dead IC so you can see what the number of it is. So it's an analog devices chip. It's an AD7302BRUZ, which is just a dual channel D to A converter is all that this is. So they say they are a dime a dozen, except for everybody wants to sell them in quantity. And if you want to buy ones and twos of them, you're going to pay a price. And uh, I did pay a price. It was a lot for two chips. Anyway, uh, let's get this one out of here. Same technique, we'll use the uh, heat gun, heat this thing up, lift it off, flex the board, drop the new one in. Should be a piece of cake. Should bring this one back to life. The next project will be taking that scope that blew the other one up. I'm not gonna hook it up to that scope until I know that there's no voltage on this thing. Uh, we'll, we'll take the heat kit and we'll find out why it's got voltage on there. As I say, the guy that sold it to me should have tested that before putting the thing up for sale, but it's a nice little scope and it's got a little three inch uh, round CRT and it's going to look beautiful just as a dedicated, I want it as a dedicated clock, dedicated CRT clock. I've got the boards for it, I just need the scope. So um, let's get this IC out of this thing. Same as before. Good little Black & Decker, on low, of course. And we'll just heat this thing up. Damn hot day to be doing this too. It's like, you know, I keep getting the uh, alerts on my phone that a heat advisory has been issued for the area. It's like 30 plus degrees out here. Crazy. Hottest day of the year and I'm sitting out here using a heat gun. I'm already sweating as it is and now I'm using a heat gun here, making it even warmer in the shop. There we go, chip is off. Let this thing cool down for a while before everything else falls off. You can see here the uh, solder's melted here on the, the terminals. I got this board pretty warm to get that chip off. But there it is, let this thing cool down, then we'll prep it. Okay, this thing should be cool enough now that I can peel off the... So you want to make sure that it's cooled down completely before removing the uh, heat shield material because um, if the solder is still soft you could actually lift your components. And this stuff really can only be used once because it, it, the adhesive starts to break down after the first use. So. But it's great stuff. It's great stuff if you need to change chip out. It uh, makes it really quite easy to lift these things off without damaging other parts. So there's the other dead chip that we'll throw away. Get it out of the way for now. Don't need to get that mixed up. We'll just uh, put some flex down on the board. Just checking the board, checking the traces, making sure there's no damaged traces here. We'll put a bit more flux on here so we can get the board prepped. Get some solder on here and then get the new IC in place.
In case you guys are wondering what I use to inspect, I'm just using a Pro's Kit MA016. It's a magnification uh, hood. I don't even need to use the full magnification, but I do use the little uh, jeweler's extra lens to see the real close-up stuff. It uh, really makes inspecting these boards quite simple. And uh, I find as I get a little older, I need a little more help seeing the real fine stuff. But uh, I'm still able to work on this. It's amazing I can actually still see this stuff, to tell you the truth, because it's getting pretty small. Anyway, let's get the second IC here. Hopefully we'll be going two for two. Oops, that's backwards. Yeah, I think I got the alignment pretty good there. We'll just put some flux onto the pins here. and tack the first pin down to hold it in place and I can do the rest okay looking good let's do the rest of the pins There we go. Do my inspection and see how this looks. Looks good to me. Let's try it out. Okay, we're not quite as lucky this time that, uh, that I fired it up and it's going to be the exact right display. Let's just try adjusting the size control and see if it makes any difference. Oh, I got some rosin on my screwdriver here. That's not good. So say we got something happening, but it, it may have one connection that's not quite right. Because that's not how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to be a clock face. But we do have some, we do have vertical and horizontal deflection. Because there's one. And there's the other. So it's just a matter of uh, finding out why it's not working properly. I'm just going to go double check my connection to make sure that there's none that have been missed. Oh, that's a little better. We're off by 90 degrees. Let's just switch my two probes around. Ah, it looks a little better. And no more distortion. Let's adjust the size on this thing. Jeez, that guy's moving. Holy smoke! Ta-da! It's fixed. Excellent, eh? I'm two for two. Here's the other board, just so you guys know that it's the new one. It's not, I, I'm not pulling a fast one here. This is the one that does not have the, uh, the cord on it, and it does not have the battery holder. The other one had the battery holder. This one doesn't. This is the second one. Two for two. 
I just had to uh, re put some more flux on here and just reheat it again. I guess one of the uh, one of the uh, pins wasn't properly soldered down. Anyway, that's it. Two oscilloscope clock boards repaired. I'm happy. Now I have to fix this little scope. It's, one of these is going to go on. It's, this is the little scope that I bought here. So it's going to go on this at some point. But you see I got my horizontal and vertical input on the back on here. But uh, one of these has got 85 volts on it. So um, yeah. It's going to have to be uh, taken apart and fixed and see why it's there. But that's the next project. Now I've got my uh, my two little generators working. I'm happy. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.